For the past weeks, we have been preparing our engine room to receive our brand new engine. And even though it looks like it's ready, we still have a lot to do. Finally! I'm Roberta. And I'm Duca. And together, we are on the mission of bringing this sailboat that was neglected for over 22 years back to life. So, don't forget to subscribe and to join us every Monday for a new episode. <laughs> the truth is, we still have some modifications we need to do in order to receive the new engine. And that's what we're going to start doing today. Because one big problem, for example, is the exhausting hose. We have here, you're not seeing right now, but I can show you an old image. We have the water lock. The water lock is right here. So this water lock is really good, but there is always a but. The diameter of the hose for the exhausting system used to be two inches and one quarter of an inch. And now the new one, of course, is three inches. Here is one connection we had before on the hose for the exhausting hose. And this is the diameter. And now this is a sample of the diameter of the new hose. Can you try to put this there? <laughs> so that means it's a lot bigger. Yeah, but it's simple, right? You just take one hose and you install the new one, right? Not really. Not really. <laughs> yeah. This used to go through here. How can I go through here now? So we are trying to work around this and find a way of fixing this huge problem that's gonna be a mess of course but come with me that I'm gonna show you the main problem so the hose come that way through here up here so it's not here but it comes up <laughs> here and that's the hose it's like a rock now so from here it goes back until this point is fine and goes behind all the way around and there so here's a gooseneck for the exhausting hose that comes in here and out here. But the diameter of this uh, pipe is two inches and one quarter, as I said, and we need to have three inches. So what we are planning to do is first to take this whole thing off. Here used to be the exhausting hose for the diesel generator that we don't have anymore. And right now it's just a bilge pump. So we're gonna put a valve here to make sure that the water cannot come back. We're gonna install a valve here and we're gonna divide the exhausting into two exhaustings. And according to the engineer that is a specialized in Yammer engines and he's gonna do the entire installation of the engine and the technical delivery of the engine, he said it's okay if we do this way. So let's get working. So now, what we need to do, we're going to divide this in two and the other exit is going to be connected to this one. I, I think it made sense, right? I hope so. You're, you're kind of sweaty. <laughs> it's really hard to do. It's like 30 35, 35. I think it must, might be 35 yeah. now. And everything you touch is hot. Yeah, so let's get out of this hole <laughs> and organize things. See you. No. Oh, oh. It's not you, we're not done. We're going to take <laughs> the hose off now. We just need five minutes of rest. Let's keep working. I guess we we'll see you guys tomorrow. Time to rest a little bit. See ya. The time has come. We need to try to pass these holes. Huge holes and heavy. Yeah, I'm just looking to the bulkhead, to this wall, and try to concentrate and see if the hole <laughs> is bigger. You know, like just meditating, like it's just you know, stretch a little bit. <laughs> be gonna nice. Be, yeah, this is going to be really, really, really tough. gonna be a war, a huge <laughs> fight. This don't wanna go down that easy. The problem is that we need to create a better hole. We need to cross the holes there. 
So basically, the spot we need to pass the hose through, it was already tied for two and one quarter of an inch. This is three inches. That's a lot bigger. But we're gonna find a way. We're gonna damage a little bit everything, but we're gonna find a way. this solution and we are gonna change the solution and we are gonna show you the solution later and solution solution and solution <laughs> sometimes we need to know when to give up yeah this was one of these times we decided to change the solution but before we show you that we're gonna go somewhere else and show you something really really cool it's finally time to meet Kelly for the first time Kelly who is Kelly our new engine <laughs> we have a name for the new engine Today, finally, the engine's gonna arrive, not on the boat yet, but in town. That's something, it's getting closer. Before it was in Europe, then it was three hours away, and today it's gonna be in town. And from there, we can measure, take all the measurements, and build the new support for the new engine. And then, we're gonna have a new engine. Kelly, I, I can't wait to meet Kelly, actually. <laughs> Just wait another few seconds. And here she is, look at this. What are you doing? Playing Fred. If you don't know who Fred is, you might be new to our channel. Fred's a friend that was living with us and he helped in a lot of projects on our boat. <laughs> Fred's not in town, so I need to pretend I'm Fred. Ah, I am, right? That's pretty good. I'm trying to clean up the mess because this is one mess that we didn't clean yet we have some wires that are from the old engine that we won't need anymore because all the wires from the new engine are just come from the engine straight to the panel it's just like one big you know fat many wires together and it's gonna be much cleaner so I'm trying to clean it up and check out which wire is which is what so we can you know get rid of anything that we don't need that read. Read, read, yeah. <laughs> So now I just found out that this wire that we had no idea what it was it was actually this bus for the engine and we don't need that because the new engine is going to have its own bus so we can take this one out mm. and now I'm just going to make sure the black one is from here also. We are ready to cut all these out. I think Fred's going to be proud when he watched this episode. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while he, don't, he doesn't come to town so I need to do myself. Where is Fred? Fred's at his hometown because his dad was a little bit sick, so he was taking care of his father. And while he do that, we need to, you know, work by ourselves because we miss Fred, but we still need to do stuff. <laughs> Fred, be proud. <laughs> I found what's this. Now I just need to figure out all this mess here. A lot of these wires are from the SSB radio, the single side band radio, that I'm pretty sure we're not gonna use. And if we use, we just organize again because it's just a mess we do. I'm gonna uh, hook. The probably. one we had is not working, right? Yeah, the one we have, we need to fix. And I'm not sure if it's gonna be worth to fix because nowadays you can use satellite phones and other things that are cheaper nowadays than 25 years ago. So now it's possible to use. So we might use the satellite phone instead of, you see, let's work. <laughs> nothing else to take off. Now we just have a few more to figure out. This one we need to keep because we have the panel for exterior light there and this is the connection that we cut off from here. 
but we're gonna wait for the new engine to arrive. We install the new engine and then we run this back so we can organize, it's easier to work like this. So now here, this is blower, light and light, so good. This thick wire used to go straight across the engine room, underneath the engine. That's not a nice place to yeah. go to. This is for the fridge. So we decide to take it out and go to a different route. Now we are gonna try to go this way, all the way to the galley, and then somehow we're gonna take back there and install on the fridge. I think it's gonna be a much better way. good one less wire on the engine room that's just awesome <laughs> and it's this wire we won't touch the wire for a long long time so it's better to stay under the floor instead of right underneath the engine right yeah for sure much much better and now we don't have the wire here anymore that's awesome we are trying to pass these cables through here these are the cables for autopilot and electric beauty pump. We start taking cables out. We also decide to get better ways to pass the cables because if we manage to do that, it's three less cables on the engine room. That's really good because yeah. it's less things to, you know, get all confused and dirt and everything. So here is just gonna be like really safe way if we can manage to go through here and inside here. If we do that, we have the whole way is fine. Coming next. We need to take this off. What's this? This is the brain for the old autopilot. We're not even sure if this is working. We're installing brand new electronics, so we want autopilot that talks to everything else, to the sharp plotter, to the radar, to everything. For now, you're gonna try to take this wire off, this table off, because we want to take this off the engine room, and this goes through the engine room, and the way to take it out, we need to un unhook here, Go all the way back to the engine room and change the way to come back. That's what we're gonna do now. Uh -huh. That's it. Going well? Yep. What we need to do is to take this out and run through inside this cabinet and go all the way and then we go the same way. So in this way we're gonna have one less wire going through the engine room without necessity because why should we have a wire on the engine room if we don't need it? Yeah. Doesn't make sense, right? through here and through there and keep going. Thank you. 
Ah. Now we need to figure out how to cross here without interfering with the chef, the prop, prop chef that comes here. Do you want to do it now or do you want to wait until we install the shaft in place? I think the shaft in place. So now we have two storage plates without wires going through. So here's 100% clean, no wires. And now, so here we used to have wires, now we have no wires. Terrible. It's my new instrument. Finally, the pieces arrived from the welder. That's pretty good. Actually, they're not ready yet. They're only tech weld, just to make sure they're on the right shape. Oh, by the way, these are all the pieces for the exhausting system. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge problem we didn't think through when we decided to replace the engine yeah. for a new one. The diameter of the exhausting hose is so much bigger. We're gonna try each of these in place. Let's start assembling this huge puzzle. This used to be the, the vent for the engine and now it's yeah. this, so it's smaller than the yeah. old one. We have some explanation to do this and this. Yeah, come with us. So this one is gonna arrive here, and this is the piece that's gonna divide the exhausting system into one hole on the hull of the boat and a secondary one to increase the diameter of the system because we cannot, I mean, we could, but it would be a lot of work and damage to the boat, but we could increase this diameter that is two and one quarter to three inches, but it's gonna be too much work. Instead, we are gonna add one inch, so we have three and one quarter and the way to do that is through this piece, we're gonna have a hose here. And from this hose, we're gonna go through this Y. And from this part, it will go to here. But we have this bilge pump. And for that, we're gonna add a valve because we want to make sure the water won't go back to the bilge pump. So we have a valve in between that we will only let the water from the bilge pump come this way and not come back. And I think that's a good solution. Uh, this part is done. That's we can send back to him and he can finish the weld. I think the worst part is what you're it's gonna show coming. you right now. It's coming. <laughs> I'm gonna show you the problem now. Now, the huge problem. The problem is that we have this cabinet here, these drawers here, and the hose comes this way and somehow need to do a turn this way and then this way, go through this bulkhead and then another turn that way. And that's why we have this huge piece. The reason why we did that is because this we cannot turn more yeah. than this. So it comes from behind on the head, comes through a hole down there, and then this way, this way, and it's supposed to be up. Be up. So this needs to turn this much. I hope this is the only thing that's wrong. Yeah, the main problem is not that. I don't know if you can tell, but there is a little metal piece and another one there. And this is what holds the whole bulkhead in place. That means we cannot take this, it's, it's just a little tab on each side and there is nothing we can do. We cannot make a bigger hole, we have no option. Let's see if this goes in somehow. Yeah, that's how far I can get, but that's not enough. The problem is that I can get to this point, but I need to get behind of this bulkhead like this. That means I would need to go this way. This is gonna be harder than we thought. We are gonna try something different, a way of trying to pass this huge piece. I think Hubera found the solution. We had an idea of creating a hole here, a bigger hole on the side. It's not gonna make any difference for the furniture. <laughs> yeah, but if we have this hole, we might be able to put inside here and then inside. So let's try that. More destruction. We wish we had a multi-tool, multi <laughs> but we don't have a multi-tool, we need to do with the Two we have. <laughs> two we have. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta this do. This one is our remote to two. Yeah, this is our remote to two. <laughs> because we are destroying the boat we just stick pieces and pieces we're gonna send the boat's lighter now <laughs> that's good 
you know, taking the excess wood from, from the <laughs> No, but we're gonna sand and clean and, and make it look better after we are done. Mm -hmm. We will. It's gonna look better. Trust me. She's like, I don't trust you. Work it? I think that's a win. Finally. Let's see. Now we can put it there. <laughs> and all we need to do now is to change this angle and we're good to go. Hopefully the drawer will fit in place. <laughs> we made it! We made it! That's now we just need to send this to the water to change the angle and that's it. It's gonna rain soon. It's funny how we stay inside of the boat just working and working and working and we basically forget about the outside and then <laughs> we're like, oh, the weather changed. Yeah. This angle was like here and we want this angle like here. Now we can do a dry fit. So that's the last angle we need to fix. Now you hold it in place. Ready to be welded. And guess what? That's a win. That's so exciting. I think we did. It's there. And this is gonna be another huge problem. So, water lock, check. Yeah, it's good. It goes through the bulkhead, fine, the pipe's here, it's all good. But now we need to bring the hose, the exhausting hose, this way, through another bulkhead, right here. <laughs> Can you see? And then up the shaft into the head. head. And for that we have this piece that's gonna go through here, fine, pretty good. But we have this problem. Hmm. I don't know if you can see, but even though the, ho the, the pipes are parallel, they're not straight to each other and the hose need to do this and in this small space it's impossible for the hose to do this in such a small space I just found a solution check this out this pipe here on the bottom is a straight right if we cut just a little tiny bit and we just do a little bit of them they get the angle grinder cut like here and weld like this so they create a little angle just on the tip of this so we might need some modification there I don't think we are gonna finish this for this week's episode. Yeah, you got the point. Right now we are just dry, fi dry fitting to make sure we have exactly this perfect connections because once we send it back to the welder to do the finishings, there is no way back. I mean, there is a way back, but it's much more costly and would take a longer time. So we need to properly think and make sure we have the right fittings. And after that, we have one more thing to do. We still want to paint this. It's, it's stainless too. Yeah, this is stainless steel, but it's not polished stainless steel, it's raw stainless steel. And to polish this is going to be ex more expensive than to paint. And we can paint with epoxy paint yeah. that's going to be white, just like the rest of the engine room. And it's good to see dirt and to see if there is any leak of any sort. So this is, all, we still need to figure out what to do and it's going to go back to the welder and it's going to be painted and then we can install it. So but at least it's, it's a win this week because we have the solution for you know, the exhausting system, when we bought the engine a week later, we were like, Ooh, we didn't <laughs> think about the exhausting system. And it's tricky sometimes because it's hard to predict every single problem you're going to have ahead. And sometimes you need to do what you need to do, you know? Yeah. But that's it. We're yeah. too much. Yeah, as usual. <laughs> See you guys week. next Monday. See you guys next Monday.